Mafia 2 is badly underrated. It's an opulent gangster show with some of the best world building on the PC. The environment is breathtaking, the plot is engrossing, and the level of detail is astounding. It does have a few flaws. There's a little too much fighting in this game. The automobile is jittery in its handling. Some of the checkpointing makes me angry. Despite its flaws, it's still a fantastic game. It's the story of Vito Scaletta, a Sicilian whose family immigrated to Empire Bay in 1932. He is given the option of going to jail or joining the army after being caught for robbery in 1943. He thinks that a spell in the army is preferable to rotting in a cell and returns to Sicily to battle Mussolini's blackshirts. Vito returns to Empire Bay on leave in 1945. He's supposed to return in a month, but his old chum Joe Barbaro, who has ties to organized crime, pulls some strings, and he's unexpectedly released from duty. He attempts to live a normal life by humping crates for $10 a day at the docks. But he isn't around for long. For a guy like Vito, the allure of the underground and the wealth it promises is simply too strong. The reception to the film was mixed. Its harshest reviewer stated that the game's open environment was barren, with little to do in it. However, they were missing the point. You'll be disappointed if you go into Mafia 2 expecting Grand Theft Auto. It's essentially a story-driven, linear shooter. The city is present, yet it serves just as a backdrop. A well-made film set that adds to the story's sense of place. Empire Bay isn't as rich or detailed as Los Santos in Grand Theft Auto 5 or San Francisco in Watch Dogs 2, but it's still one of the best virtual cities on PC. It's a work of fiction based on New York City and Chicago. The artists at 2K Check, on the other hand, did an amazing job of making it feel like a real place. Moreover, the amount of minute detail is exceptional throughout. Workers unload cargo from ships as they scurry about the docks. In Chinatown, cherry blossom trees flutter in the breeze. Birds swoop down to perch on street signs. There are newspaper boys, smoking chimneys, and a thousand other minor things that come together to form a lovely overall. There are no side quests, random trinkets, or crazy vehicles to steal in Empire Bay. You are never given the opportunity to drive a tank or employ a jetpack. But wandering and exploring its streets for what it is and how it feels, rather than what it has to offer you between missions, is still a thrill. Mafia 2 didn't take long for me to fall in love with it. In actuality, it was the second expedition. On a frigid winter's evening in 1945, our anti-hero returns from World War II and finds himself back in the Italian neighborhood where he grew up. As he goes through the streets, still in his uniform and suitcase in hand, Dean Martin's Christmas classic Let It Snow plays. This is a brilliant usage of licensed music. A swarm of B-17 bombers soars overhead, telling us that the war isn't done yet. Couples argue, children toss snowballs, and a man gets a haircut in a brightly illuminated barbershop. It's a fantastic piece of scene setting, which is something this game excels at throughout. Mafia 2 is also a rare open world game in which we see two different versions of the same city. The game's opening act takes place in the 1940s. With snow piling up on cars and sidewalks, people stumbling on icy surfaces, and a distinct chill in the air, the mood is dark and gloomy. Mafia 2 is a fantastic period piece that comes in second only to Rockstar's well-researched L.A. Noir in terms of portraying America in the 1940s. Vito and Joe start climbing the criminal ladder together here. You begin at the bottom, pulling off small-time heists, selling stolen goods, and other odd tasks, similar to GTA. However, something goes awry, and Vito is arrested. This acts as a type of intermission. You're imprisoned at the Hartman Federal Penitentiary, another example of 2K Check's ridiculously thorough world building. The first person entry into the prison, across rows of jeering convicts, is very well executed. You come to meet a handful of your fellow convicts in the slammer, including a respected mafia consigliere named Leo Galante, who is serving his own sentence. Vito improves his boxing skills, cleans a few toilets, beats up several individuals in the shower area, and impresses Galante, who later on in the game proves to be a vital friend and also appears in Mafia 3. The entire prison segment is like the Shawshank Redemption Cross with Goodfellas prison scenes, and it's a great palate cleanser for what's to follow. Vito escapes from prison six years later to find a radically changed Empire Bay. It's 1951, and the city is no longer dismal and snowy, it's bright, colorful, green, and alive. The war is finished, the economy is rebuilding, and the teens have taken over, screeching around in sports cars, listening to rock and roll, and clashing with the stubbornly old-school Joe and Vito later in the game. 
Despite the fact that Mafia 2 is situated in a fictional city, it is a compelling, stylized portrayal of the United States during and after World War II, and not only the good parts. When it comes to dealing with racism, poverty, and other themes that afflicted the era, it's unexpectedly bold, something Mafia 3 takes on even more explicitly. However, Mafia 2 is a gangster power fantasy as well. You may dress Vito up in fashionable period-accurate outfits, scream around in flashy sports cars, and fire Tommy guns as his bank account grows. His safe houses get increasingly opulent as he advances through the ranks, from run-down apartments to an ideal modernist 1950s house in the green suburbs. Although Mafia 2 is based on true events, it is a pulpy, overblown narrative of feuding gangs and criminal conspiracies. It's an excellent one, though, with a convoluted, dramatic plot that will hold your attention for the whole 12-hour runtime. Vito is a character who is not sympathetic. After all, he is a brutal crook. Nonetheless, you warm up to him. He has an uncanny ability to make people like him. And his sidekick Joe, albeit unpleasant at times and serving as the game's comic relief, is a memorable character. The game is well written and well acted, featuring unforgettable set pieces. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel.